the latest uh, song to come out like before the album is It's About Time with FGL. Yeah. And uh, so this was this was, I think, the last song we wrote for the album. And we just wanted I mean, obviously, just that that kind of party element that we didn't have yet. And it was like, but no pressure. Like we just wrote it and it was like, if we, if we home run, then awesome. If not, then we'll just, you know, make the record. And so we did. And I love this song. And, uh, after we finished it, I was like, dude, there's no other, no other human beings that I'd rather have feature on this song than FGL. And, and, you know, we tried for other features on other songs and it just didn't go through. And I'm kind of glad because, you know, I, I don't want to be like a feature heavy artist. Like I want, I want them to hear my music, but then this song was just like begging, begging for FGL. And so I played it, I played it for Tyler out at his farm, uh, over the speakers of the, of like an ATV. And he was like, dude, love it. And then he sent it to BK and BK loved it too. And then like a couple of weeks later, we were all in the studio just making the magic happen. Really, yeah. really fun. And that's what I think. There's such a balance on this project of those more sentimental moments like Southern Symphony or Waiting for mm-hmm. You or um, even Come to Come to Jesus. And then there are the just like turn yeah. up moments that are, are really tasty as well. Can we talk about title track? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I think this is the, my new favorite song ever that I've ever written. Southern Symphony, uh, it's just <clears throat> it's just because it was so easy to write, you know, Ooh. like we started. I'll, I'll show you exactly how it went down. All right. We I had, love a visual. Because, yeah, well, it was like um, we started Parker. I wrote it with Parker and um, this dude in L.A. So we were in L.A. and she was talking to an old guy. and He was like something about she thinks my tractor's sexy and <laughs> and part she said she said he said well where i come from that's a love song and i was like my ears perked up oh. i was like and i just went back in my mind to to union city tennessee where i grew up and you know we hunt, we played in my my best friend's magnolia tree like all day every day and then they had a big old bug zapper in their driveway and I don't know, just like I just dug deeper into into my childhood and my story and and this song really just fell out and and um we were we wrote it in like an hour, hour and a half and just one of those ones you step back after you write it and you're like, Did we really just write this song? Like it's so beautiful and just like I don't know. I yeah. love I really love this song so much. And where I come from, that's a love song. It's so great. How did you, yeah. how was it clear that was what you wanted to name the project? Pretty much, yeah. I've had Southern Symphony in my back pocket for about 10 years. Like when you, you know, when you start touring and you have to make like a, uh, an LLC or whatever mm-hmm. for touring. So I, I, uh, I was like, well, I'll just call it Southern Symphony. I don't know. Because it's like, that was like the name of my band, I guess. Like, like your redneck symphony yeah, I love it. kind of thing. And I was like Rus- Russell Dickerson and the Southern Symphony, and and so that just like stuck. And I kept that title in my back pocket for a long time. And I was, I, was, I just knew that the the perfect time would come around to to throw that in a song. And I didn't I didn't know at the time it'd be the title of the album, but it's just like all of those sounds, you know. The Ice Cubes and Sweet Tea, Bug Zapper in the Driveway, Fight Song on a Friday. Like all of those sounds combined together for R.A. Southern Symphony. And that just was, that just hit me. That just hit home for me. And that's, um, was, I was just like, we got to, we got to call the album Southern Symphony. Well, since you've exited album two, this gives me the opportunity to talk about Babyland. Can we talk a little bit about Babyland? Oh, yes, please. Absolutely. I mean, one, you have the most <sighs> charming wife in America. Mm-hmm. How would you not make the... Possibly the, the world. Uh, arguably, arguably the world, you know. Arguably the universe, yes. <laughs> so let's talk about... Can we just talk about... I want to hear about watching her become a mom. Mm-hmm. I want to hear about this little cuteness. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yes, yeah. that, exactly. Uh, watching her become a mom, I mean, it changes you like whatever. I just did a podcast recently and they're like, 
But what about the myth of like, you know, if you see your wife have a baby, then you're like not as attracted to her. And I'm like, whatever oh. crap that is, that is the most bogus. I'm like, I have never been more attracted to my wife after That's right. after seeing her become a superhero. You know what I mean? I'm That's like, right. first of all, I respect her more than I ever have. <laughs> my, I ain't a chance I could do that. You know what I mean? And it's just mm-hmm. like, there's all this pop culture myth behind, behind, you know, having a baby and becoming a dad, a parent. And it's like, dude, whatever, whatever you think is going to be better than becoming a parent. It's not, I told my friends that they're like, we don't know if we're going to have babies. I'm like, look, whatever you think is going to be better in this life. Like it's not, I promise I've been there. We, I've had a little success. I've had a couple number ones. Mm-hmm. Nothing feels like this every single morning it's like an it's like 10 number ones every single morning just seeing his little face smile at you and like he has an exceedingly cute face though too oh i I told i was like should we like get him into modeling (laughs) legit should we should we check into this because he honestly has the most perfect baby face i've ever seen do you guys have any like christmasy traditions you're gonna involve Remington in or anything you're excited about passing down holiday wise to him? I mean, so we got him this really cute onesie it says it says Merry Christmas, obviously on the front. And then on the back, on the butt, it says it's full. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally yes. a Christmas vacation. Yes. I don't know if you can say that on this interview, but it's no, we'll just bleep it. Everyone will get butt. it. It's amazing. That's hilarious. Yeah. So good. So that's what that's where we're at for Christmas. 